we're going to be looking at passes now and basically how they can be used, what they're used for, and how they've been implemented in XSI. So the concept of passes is essentially a way to render out different elements of your scene. Uh, so for example, you could render out just the specular highlights in the scene, or the shadows, or say the reflections. And by rendering each of these separately through their own pass, in compositing, you're able to create a much higher level of realism by selectively color correcting each layer or blurring them. Uh, it basically gives you a lot more freedom in the post area to create a, a much richer scene than you could if you just rendered out everything as a single pass. So in XSI, the whole render tool set is basically designed around the concept of the pass. There's always this notion of the current pass. You always have to be on a pass when you're working. So you can see over here on the left hand side we have a drop down that lists all the passes in the scene as well as allows to select a pass to make it current. So by default XSI creates a default pass so it doesn't have any effects on it or anything. You can just see it as a beauty pass. So if you rendered this out right now it would just render out the full scene with all its elements. And if we look more closely at it, we can see all the different components that make up a pass. So each pass basically has its own render options associated with it. Uh, as well, we've got a camera that's associated with that pass. So this is the camera the pass will use to render through at render time. And then you've got different groups, uh, two different forms of groups known as partitions. So you've got object partitions, which contain the objects in the scene and you've got light partitions which contain the lights in the scene. 